Good morning out there. How are you today? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Cynthia and I'm here to do a spontaneous reading with some kind of like downloads or dream messages I got in my dream state last night, um, which is something that I have asked for as I've had more kind of intuitive and psychic abilities develop in myself through my own practice and intention that, that I would have more access to those abilities of my uh, third eye knowing. Um, one of the ways that I asked for that to show up in my life is to um, be given dreams that might be helpful to people because I'm someone who's always been fascinated by dreams and dream work and dream interpretation. And so I set that intention a couple years ago and I feel like it's now finally starting to develop. Um, but last night, it's one of those cases of be careful what you wish for because I think this is the first time that I've had these dreams that I meant to share that aren't necessarily dreams for me, um, but they were really intense and overwhelming dreams and they involve the 3 a.m. witching hour to some degree and were stressful for me to experience, but also I think, I mean, in part they were helpful to me, but I think part of why these dreams were so vivid and intense was so, I because I meant to share them here on the channel. And I even have already a place for this work once and if it came to me under my Obsidian Mirror podcast playlist. So that's where this is gonna go in addition to just the general collective tarot playlist. Um, but I'm going to first start off with the dreams that I had and try to recall them for you that in, to the best of my ability. Um, and hopefully these are going to reach the folks that they're meaningful for. Um, they were not good dreams, but they're meant to be, I think, helpful to you either as confirmation or so that maybe you know and are empowered somewhat by the information and can make informed decisions if you're someone that believes in this kind of work. Um, so the first dream I had was a dream that I was, and I think I'm a stand-in for you in this dream. I'm assuming that's what it felt like anyways. Some of it had resonance for me, but not nearly to the degree that I think it's meant for someone else. And so in the dream, I had had a falling out with my sister and a lot of time had gone by like we weren't in contact anymore in the context this was just sort of my knowing in the dream and I can't exactly remember how but somehow I was tipped off where I could find her um, to try to get some answers I guess or to try to get to the bottom of things and maybe clear out the cycle or end the cycle right and so I had discovered in the dream that my sister had cursed me and um, I didn't I it was a very devastating realization right to realize this person that you were so close to had actually put a curse on you and on your life and somehow she in the dream she had done this to some degree in my life and then left and moved overseas so there was like an ocean kind of between us and then somehow I ended up there and for whatever reason it was in Jamaica which is strange because the the people in the dream have nothing to do with Jamaican culture and and so that's what's where there's maybe a sort of oddity to it or where it will resonate for you um, at least not to my knowledge, maybe someone can correct me, but th this was a group of people that my sister had joined up with and then they left and went to Jamaica. And the culture of this group was very steampunk. So that's why I think that this had, I don't know anyone or have anybody in my life in that sort of culture of tradition, right? I mean, I have a little bit of like, I love Gogol Bordello and things like that, but I'm not a steampunk person. It's not a part of my aesthetic necessarily. I don't have a group, friends group from that culture, but you might. And so my sister had linked up with this group and by doing so, she had been at a rough place in her life, found this group, joined this group, and then they left and moved overseas. And somebody in the group was teaching her how to practice voodoo. And so 
by the time I found her, she looked very beautiful and in this new steam, it was like a new person in some ways as she had found this community of steampunks that were like, it was like a witch group, basically a coven. It sounds very Anne Rice in a way, but so you might be somebody that loves Anne Rice, I guess as well. But my sister was just decked out in steampunk attire and really resistant to me having found her and very enraged and but her group wasn't necessarily going to shield her from me. There was some reason for that, which I don't know, because I didn't know anything about her group. But this, I kept having to, in the dream, what kept happening was I kept tr tracking her down again. Like, wherever she was had relocated. Not to harm her, but to get answers, because I was carrying a lot of pain about the knowledge that she had cursed me. And I was... Just kept saying why like I just don't understand why after we were so close like why would you have done this I can't and then she would sort of like go up and smoke again and I the answer would elude me then I would find them again and they were in their group and you know she was sort of being protected once she could make her way back to the group but it's almost like they were hands off if if I managed to find her somewhere in the etheric plane and confront her, they weren't going to necessarily bail her out. If she could get her way back to them, then they had, then she was had more of kind of the protection of the group, right? Which there's safety in numbers. So it's like she was um, having to face me, even though she didn't want to. And really, uh, not a lot came out of the dream. She started to explain just some envy or some anger or feelings that she, she never was very apologetic, is what it all boiled down to. She looked very beautiful, but she seemed still very unhappy, even though she had found this new community and there was this sort of creative culture behind it and she was getting trained in her own craft. Oh my gosh, I just remembered something. So she kept not really just saying, I don't understand what the big deal is. Like just, this is the way things are, Cynthia. Just get, this is how it is. I was upset. It's not personal. I just wanted, you know, it, it kept that kept being the thing like it's not personal. And I kept saying, but it is personal. We're sisters. Like, I just feel devastated. Like, why? I just don't understand why you did this to me. Was I some kind of a threat to you? Like, what? Why? What? You know, I was really needing to know why. And she kept kind of trying to be almost like slippery, like couldn't like would get away just as I was kind of catching up to her to say, what is going on? She would elude me again. Finally, at the very end of this portion of the dream, I found her again, and I, instead of asking anymore, I told her, and I was kind of yelling at her in the dream and saying, I know why, I know why you did this, it just came to me, and everybody around was sort of like listening, but also, to them it all seemed like this big joke, which was also what was so difficult, like everybody was sort of in the, this like cynical hot takes, like everybody's a moron, like were the smart ones like it was that kind of a culture like kind of toxic even though it was fairly unified it was energized by judging how stupid everyone else is or something right like i don't know exactly but i finally pinned it down at the very end of the dream and i said i know why i know why you did this and things kind of went quiet as everybody kind of tried to listen but they were all also sort of acting like they didn't care what i had to say but you could tell everybody was listening to what I had to say. And I said, you did this because this is a path I went down, meaning magic and plant medicine and esotericism. And I was like, you did this because it's a path I went down and you were angry because it's a path that you were interested in and you felt like I stole it from you and really I didn't steal it from you because as you can see, it's available to everyone. You don't have to, just because I got into it doesn't mean that you can't be into it too. Like I had the, dedication to keep following up and practicing it and that's how I've gotten the regard and respect that I've gotten is because I committed to it you didn't commit to it back then it was just an interest for you so why are you now mad and punishing me and cursing me because you feel like I stole something that was yours right so that's what it was about that was that dream then just now as I'm telling you about that there's a, a song coming through 
which for me, from my generation, I'm Generation X, this was a song that I used to hear a lot in my dad's car on the radio when I was really young. And it's a song called Sundown by Gordon Lightfoot. That's a song about betrayal and about his obsession with his woman who really wasn't as, it wasn't an equally matched, like he, he was obsessed with, he, she was a real person. In fact, I learned about the song um, because I was interested in it a while back, just because I had so many memories associated with the song and the lyrics are so kind of intense. And um, it's a song about his dealer that he fell in love with. Gordon Lightfoot was a heroin addict. He fell in love, which is weird because my brother had a long term, when he was still alive, he had a very long term affair with a married woman who was also an addict. They somehow formed kind of like a trauma bond and then she ended up dying and my, so did my brother, honestly, several years later, but, or no, wait a minute, I'm sorry, she didn't die. Um, but they lost touch when she got clean and went back to her husband. So that was a big loss for my brother because he really was in love with her, even though he had selected someone who wasn't really available, right, um, to him all the way. It was kind of a half relationship, but that was partly his comfort zone because he had his own wounds, right? So he kind of erroneously in the early stages thought, this is a safe relationship because I can come and go, she's married, but as he fell deeper and deeper in love, it became really traumatizing for him. So that might be another message. But anyways, back to sundown. Sundown, the song by Gordon Lightfoot, is about him, his rage at any other men that might be coming around what he felt was his woman, who's also his dealer, but she was not really as committed to him. So she was kind of out with other people. This is all like a true story from Gordon Lightfoot's life. Um, so the song Sundown might have meaning for you or the fact that you're Gen X and maybe have a history of Gord whatever, something about this, that story may have meaning for you that just came through um and then the next there was one more dream and for some reason now all of a sudden i'm oh yeah so then there was another dream where i was a part of an organizing community like a either a community service like a food bank drop-in center kind of place like a gathering place for people to go and get resources and meet one another and connect and form community and you know it was just this nice setting well somehow somebody else kind of again it was like someone trying to thinking they're going to take that because that's something important to me and they were going to make me look bad in the eyes of this group so that might be something that you're going through an anxiety that you're having where you may be feeling falsely accused of something or you're having to defend yourself against a group, you know, sometimes in organizing circles that'll call being cop jacketed. Like maybe someone put the word out, like we think so-and-so is an undercover and then all of a sudden you're a pariah, right? Because one person spoke out, I think that person's a cop, then everybody becomes suspicious of you, right? So it might have something to do with that. That might have meaning for you. But I kept, it was a similar theme to the steampunk theme. I kept trying to grasp, like, why? Why is this, why won't you believe me? Like, I was really struggling to feel seen and heard and believed for something that I didn't do wrong, that I was being accused of, though, for whatever reason. So that was happening in this community center. That might have something to do with you. Um, then it kind of transitioned into me being asleep here this happened around 3 a.m so this is kind of the witching hour um i was asleep here in my bed last night and um i was having a nightmare that somebody who wasn't very good at it but who was still kind of terrifying nevertheless but he had some vulnerabilities like he just he couldn't hold his attention very long or he didn't really have the anger he once had or it was something like that like somebody was really losing steam. There's that, that word again, steam, for some reason. He's losing steam energetically, but he was trying to terrorize me in here, in my unit. And he had like a really large sledgehammer, like the kind you use to tear down structures, like if you're gonna knock a wall out of your home or something like that. And he was circling my house and smashing my house with it, like to try to beat my walls down to get in here. And I was trying to call for help and it was one of those kinds of typical dreams of like, I can't, like I called 911 
And the 911 lady, because I live in a small town, not that this is funny, it was really scary, but also weird. I remember in the dream being like, what does that have to do with anything? Like, I was saying, this guy's here, he's trying to bust down my, like, he's terrorizing me, like, my address, and I was screaming my address. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if I actually was speak talking in my sleep, because I talk in my sleep. And um, especially when I've been going through a stressful period in my life. And so I was just screaming my address to this 911 operator and describing what was happening. And because we're in a small local community, the 911 operator knew the person that was doing this to me personally. And she was saying, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, he was having a really rough time. He just found out that he's gotten laid off. So you're going to have to kind of go eat. And I was like, what? Like, I just remember being like, what does that have to do with anything? Like, it doesn't matter if we're sympathetic to why he's losing it. He's going to murder me or, you know, like there's, it doesn't matter. Like our, our understanding about why somebody is trying to do this because they had this horrible going postal kind of day. Like the 911 operator was so busy explaining to me, like why this person was doing this behavior that I wasn't being covered, right? Like nobody was coming to help me. And then it would be sort of the normal like panic and fear dreams where you'd be calling 911 and then it wasn't working and maybe I should call a friend instead and screaming my address and having this community of people that know this man have his back more than mine, even though there was a potential that he could really harm me. This tiny community really was trying to be more sympathetic to this guy than to me. So that was another stress. That, and that you might be experiencing in some way, like someone may have accused you or be trying to sabotage you at your workplace or accuse you of not really caring for the people that you serve or something like that. That could be something that you're feeling vulnerable about right now. And that happened during the witching hour, the sledgehammer dream. So when I woke up, I heard like a big bang outside my wall, like right where I was sleeping that I had, I kind of froze in that way that infrasound can freeze someone's prey. And I froze like that for a while because I was trying to figure out is somebody really outside and that's why I had that dream or, or is this part of the dream or what? But it was during the witching hour. So that time of night is a time that's sort of known to be where the veil is kind of thin. So that also came through. And then at the very end, when I was waking up this morning, I yelled out and woke myself up like, you're not going to get a fucking jail, get out of jail for free card. You're going to have to pay the piper. And I woke myself up saying that. So that might have something to do. You may have had an argument like that with someone about paying the piper or get out of jail free. Like there might be something about gaming because that's from Monopoly. Get out of jail free card that becomes like a a common phrase now that people use but still I yelled that out as I was waking up this morning you're not gonna get a fucking jail get out of jail for free card you're gonna have to pay the piper right so that I don't know who that's for but that is another message that came through the sleep state so with that that's kind of my my dream interpretation portion of this layout so the important a couple of the important takeaways were, I think from the dreams, at least the way that they're landing in my body is that trying to track my sister down and make her explain to me what her rationales were ultimately was futile because I ended up realizing on my own what it was about. It was about competitiveness and jealousy. And she had done this out of, and interestingly in our real lives, like I don't, this is not the case with my sister. None of this happened. This is not my dream because my sister didn't join the steampunk movement or, you know, it's not that. But my sister has long held a belief that a close friend of hers when they were growing up put a hex on her or a curse, not really believing that it would work, but that it gained strength over the years. And this friend disappeared mysteriously. It's in fact an old from the original Unsolved Mysteries series her friend who disappeared is featured in one of the stories so there might be something about that too that's relevant to you um i don't know why that's coming up but i feel like a lot of this is just flowing i'm not really sure i'm just supposed to mention these themes because they might have some resonance for you um 
so that was that you don't like you know the answer if you're trying to get to the bottom of why somebody betrayed you and perhaps it's within your steampunk circle you know why if you go deep down enough inside chasing them down to try to get the answers might be a waste of your energy when you can just go within because that's where the dream ultimately ended was that i found my own answer and when i yelled it out nobody denied denied it right so that was that um the dream about the community service um dream i'm not exactly sure what this is about but this also just came to me because part of that community service dream kept showing me these tree limbs really vital living tree limbs i mean trees are living beings but they don't tend to like come to life like ants do in lord of the rings but there was a tree that was had these two branches that were just flowing together like this and then they would be in this dance together in the wind but what was so wild was that they were way bigger branches that than would ever be moved by the wind but they were showing themselves as like these flowing arm like branches that keep intertwining and they're pointing directly at you meaning me in the dream that was a part of that cop jacketing dream like maybe somebody's trying to destroy your reputation and I don't know what those tree branches have to do with it I'm assuming maybe that is going to mean something for you I don't know um so anyways I think that's that and I I just want to thank my guides for giving me those dreams because it's the first time that I woke up pretty sure these are dreams I'm supposed to share on my channel and this is something that I asked for but it also made me realize I better be careful what I wish for because I don't know if I always am going to want to have somebody else's nightmare that I then have to explain on here. That's a little much, <laughs> but it's okay. I mean, I, I can handle it. I'm grounded. I, I feel safe. Like it's, it's okay. I didn't at first though. It was hard to shake these dreams off, which is what made me recognize I need to, um, I need to say something about them and share them because they weren't necessarily meant for me. So now with that, I'm going to go ahead and read cards about the situation here. Like why, what is going to be helpful for you to know about these dreams? Um, and I'm going to start with my deck. Sometimes when I'm feeling, I'm glad I made this little tarot deck because sometimes when I'm feeling really overwhelmed and the cards are not super helpful for some reason which happens sometimes because you're supposed to find your own answers instead of turn to tarot or divination um sometimes when i'm feeling like though that though but i still need something tangible guidance like tarot can give i turn to my own deck because it's my voice and so i know i am going within even though it's a deck that i created two years ago right so that's what i'm going to start with today are three of my cards to set the tone for this reading um, I'm also thinking about putting my Venmo and Cash App on here so that you can give tips if you want. Um, I do offer personal readings. Um, I have a website where you can go and schedule them in my scheduling portal, but I'm not sure that's really the best way to go. I might list my email here so that you can reach out via email to ask for a reading. I don't know. Let me know if that's something that would be of interest to anyone that watches. Um, working on expanding my channel in ways that feel good to me and that feel reasonable and like I can keep up with it, right? So what what else is going to be helpful for you to know about any of these messages that, that are coming through right now? Gosh, this card has been coming up so much lately. Okay. So the first one is this involves an ancestral pattern. Look to your lineage or bloodline. So this might is has, you know, direct relationship to that sister dream I had. Um, there might be some kind of bloodline issue between you. Um, there might be an ancestral wound that is playing out between you and your family. There might be something like a generational curse. I'm somebody that believes in black magic and curses. I believe that we can overcome them, absolutely. And I don't deal in that kind of magic, but I know it's out there, right? So you might have had been somebody who feels like you've been ancestrally cursed in some way or that your family system has been cursed. 
The second card is fighting for justice is at the heart of this matter, which speaks right to that community service dream and feeling falsely accused. So you may be feeling falsely accused in your community of something. And then finally, anima animus, which is integrating the masculine and feminine within you. That's a Jungian concept. Um, Rush, another song is coming through. I am a lover of the band Rush. Not everybody loves Rush because it's math rock and Getty Lee's voice is not for everyone. I love Rush. I, I love all every aspect of Rush I love, including Getty's voice. And um, they have a song about this called Animate that Neil Peart wrote that's very incredible lyricism. Um, he's a wonderful lyricist. And so integrating the masculine and feminine within you, perhaps to protect yourself versus be passive or the other way around, in which case, like hunting down your sister, maybe if you just go within, you'll receive some of the answers that you might have been eluding you about this family dynamic or feeling of curse in the family. So what's going to be helpful for you to know going forward now now that we've identified these dream themes thank you for being here can we learn about this? That, oh my gosh, I'm just having another story come through about my own life. So I grew up in the D.A.R.E. generation, which was D.A.R.E. to keep kids off drugs, say no to drugs. That was a big part of the sort of cop celebratory culture about criminalizing addiction. And in high school, I was a partier, like I ran wild in high school, but I managed to also get really good grades and still be a good student, even though I kind of partied and whatever. Um, and at one point, this group of narcs, these teenage kids that had formed their own narc group to like narc on their friends to the school or to the cops about them using drugs they came to our school to give a presentation and i remember being proud of my school because even people who were pretty straight edge kids didn't like it they were like what what about whatever narcs like they didn't like these kids right nobody really they didn't get a very warm reception and i had a friend there was this place in our high school called the senior lounge which was where the seniors could go and hang out during lunch um or whenever right and i was walking through the senior lounge and my friend came walking towards me and just goofing around he was like here have a penny and he handed me a little copper penny like for good luck maybe or something and I was like thanks and we just kind of kept going because it was between classes so the you know we were trying to get to class well this fucking group of narc teenagers saw that and said that we had done a drug deal and so the result of that was that the vice principal had to come and search my locker and I didn't have anything we weren't dealing drugs I didn't have anything in my locker i was fine the vice principal was actually felt like liked me as a student and felt badly and he was like i'm so sorry i have to do this cindy but i have to i'm obligated if somebody accuses a student of this i'm required to investigate and i was like that's okay but i remember being really mad and then beyond that i maybe from a year earlier even i don't know um there had been a period of time where the school administration and the school security guards believed that I was dealing drugs. I have no idea why. I don't know where that idea came from. I really don't. I didn't even know. I wasn't even aware of it. I wasn't dealing drugs. I smoked pot <laughs> and I took psychedelics, right? Like I wasn't, I was a partier and I ran with kids that sold drugs, but I wasn't involved. I wasn't selling drugs. My friend who became the student body president when we were seniors, reached out to me and said, hey, I just want you to know the security, the school security and administration think that you're dealing drugs. Just be aware of that. She was like, I've tried to tell them that I, I'm pretty sure you're not, but I don't know if they believe me. So just know that that's the case. And I was horrified and angry and like, what the fuck? Really upset. And I remember 
not long after we got this anonymous survey about drug use and I let the school have it. I was just like, I've heard that I'm, you know, and I wrote it all out. I didn't go and confront anyone in person, but I wrote it all out. Like just because I smoke pot, just because I run with some kids that are a little bit, you know, sort of the wrong kids or the bad kids or whatever, I'm getting painted to be this malicious person that's like causing problems in the school when look at me I get good grades I have I'm a good friend to my friends like I had a small I came from a really small school our graduating class was I think like 85 kids so it was easy to stand out or get attention drawn to yourself it was not a very blend in kind of school any moves you made people were aware of and I just remember being really shocked and disgusted that that was happening for whatever reason that felt to me completely not legitimate anyways that story just came through so that might have something to do with a cop jacketing dream um, so lots of dream work I'm glad this dream work is coming through because this is what I asked for I asked for these kinds of um, abilities as I was developing my my um third eye ability so thank you to spirit even though those dreams were really intense <laughs> i wouldn't mind getting some less intense dreams or maybe some dreams that are going to be i mean those are going to be helpful for someone to hear i know i trust that but they were a little rough to experience but i'm okay and you know i cleanse my energy cleanse the energy here So on the bottom of the deck, we have the Eight of Wands. So there might be some communication coming in. I heard another reader the other day describe this card as you deflecting negative energy and sending it back, which was interesting. That's a take I've never had on or known about on this Eight of Wands, but that might have relevance here. Wow, this is definitely going to be helpful to someone. This is very, lots of players involved here. Lots of people involved in your life right now. It's like an over-involvement. I'm feeling that for sure. You might be feeling kind of people coming in from all sides to mess with you. So the cornerstone card here is the king of swords and i kind of think this is you you're in king of swords energy of you're in a mastery position of understanding your mind understanding and ruling the air element within you in a co-creative way i'm not saying like dominion of the air but you're you're very adept at working with the air element and keeping yourself protected it's carrying a sort of truth, right? This is very much, some people say this is Archangel Michael, a symbol. For me, Archangel Michael comes through as the Knight of Swords, but a lot of people, this is represents him in their minds. So that might be happening for you. That's a cornerstone energy. You are succeeding as a practitioner with this um, High Priestess and Chariot card. You are in the you are moving forward with wisdom and insight in terms of your intuitive abilities almost like me to some degree like as a reflection of being able to tell this dream interpretation layout for the first time um so you might be feeling in a similar energy this chariot in b nettles deck he's carrying a sword i don't really remember that being the case in other chariot imagery but in b nettles deck he's carrying the sword like this king of swords so he's in a full mastery position and riding forward very successfully with the high priestess and that's either you having integrated this wisdom like this king of swords has to understand this third eye vision in addition to the air element of logic and reason the facts are that you're being watched and that is something that came through in the dreams as well so you may be feeling a little bit of paranoia or like who's watching me or who can i really trust that's in the facts position so somebody is watching you this card came in the reverse so it might be feeling like you don't it's an unpleasant experience you may be aware that you're being watched and you're it's making you uneasy and you're not really sure why it's an in the fact position though 
Your vulnerability is a queen of pentacles. And so this to me is representing the person that you feel uneasy about or that you feel uncomfortable about. Um, it's in a vulnerability. Normally the queen of pentacles is a really lovely, abundant energy. She can often even represent a pregnancy. But here, and I love to, oh, just to honor the art. This is Bee Nettles. She made herself the queen of pentacles in the deck, which is so beautiful. But for here, for you, it's a vulnerability. So there's somebody in your life that you're uneasy about, and it's this Queen of Pentacles. These people and these players have really gotten you in your head, and it's made you really uneasy. So that might be why these dreams came through. It's a reflection of what you're worried about, what you're trying to get to the bottom of, what you're trying to figure out. It's really got you in your thoughts and in your worries. And if you see here, you're, this person's trying to sleep, and they can't sleep. So you might have had a really rough night of sleep last night, and that's coming through, right? Your strength is that you're a queen of wands, so you're equally matched to this queen of pentacles. She can't take you down, especially because of this king of swords energy here, whether it's you having mastered your air element or whether it's somebody else who's kind of like a, a protector, possibly, or an ally that is coming in to help you. Your, this is a strength for you, is this Queen of Wands energy. I'm sensing that this means you, not some a good person in your life, but you. Um, the devil on your shoulder is kind of exhausted and telling you this work is never going to end, which can get in the way of manifestation. If you're trying to complete a cycle, you might be so tired from trying to get to the bottom of all this and trying to understand and trying to move out of it and move on and transcend all this. Your shadow's really discouraged and like, fuck, we're just working and working and working to understand this or to figure it out or to master it or whatever, and we're not getting anywhere. That's what's coming through from your shadow. It's feeling some frustration, fatigue, and exhaustion and like wondering, when is this cycle going to finally close? In the seen world is this king of pentacles, which to me is the mate of this queen of pentacles. So you may have been feeling attacked by a couple for some reason. This is a pair, right? This is a pair of people. And that's why I say there's a lot of players, a lot of people. It feels like people are closing in on you almost because where the energy is headed is this blocked status of like non-movement, not moving forward. And that's why your shadow is so fatigued. Fighting for justice is at the heart of this matter. There's an ancestral pattern going on here. You might be breaking like a generational curse. And part of the way to do that is to integrate the masculine energies within you and feminine energies, which is something that a high priestess has mastered and is achieving well to her advantage. A high priestess and a chariot together as two separate figures are a really formidable pair. And this is your foundation. So a king and queen of pentacles can't really defeat a king of swords who's a charioteer and a high priestess. So I hope that's reassuring. That's important for you to know. This, these attacks are real. You are someone who's in this world to some degree, and these attacks are real. You're not in your mind. You're not crazy. You're not, um, you're not being naive. You know, you may have at one time been a little naive or believed the best about these folks, and it's been a hard lesson. It's not, they're not really for you. Um, but we're going to pull a little bit of extra clarifiers right now about um, about this king and queen here. What do you need to understand about the king and queen that have you... They might be intentionally trying to confuse you. Like if they're practitioners, they may be sending confusion to your third eye, to your crown. Trying to keep you off center and keep you confused in your L -L air element and not trusting yourself. This is here to say you can trust yourself. You're seeing clearly. Um, but they're trying to interfere with your ability to see clearly. What's important for you to know about this king and queen right now? You're in a very creative spot. You're not... It's not impacting your ability to be creative. What about this king and queen? Lightning strikes, thunder rolls, a Garth Brooks moment. So something's about to go down with them. Um, is this something you need to worry about? Nope. You need to turn this over to fate. This isn't something that you need to control or try to do anything about. This is maybe some kind of karmic justice. Um, what else? What else is important for you to know here? Um, 
pull some of these astrological cards because these cards get down and dirty. They'll tell you like who's working against you straight up. You may already know who this king and queen are. What else is important for you to know? What about this two of swords in the where the energy is headed? That might be just signaling to you to stay still. You don't have to do anything. Let fate play itself out here. What else about the quality of the moment is important for you to understand right now? Sagittarius, this card is a really positive card. It's at the bottom of the shuffle. It's a really positive fire card. Um, you might be a Sagittarius or, you know, we'll read the description in case there's more from it that you need to understand. But this is a very positive omen. So that's good things. That's good news. It replicates kind of this Queen of Wands energy. And um, the 20 degrees of... Aries, which is this albatross-like whale, or not albatross, but um, leviathan-type whale under the surface. The whale is a super powerful symbol in the Middle Eastern um, cradle of civilization belief system, right? What What is this um, 20 degrees of Oh, no, sorry, it's Aries, not, um, what did I say? Did I say Aries? I don't know if I said Aries or not. It's because these are in French, <laughs> so, and I don't speak French. Um, 20 degrees of Aries. This is something that's important to understand about this whole thing right now. In spite of his heavy appearance, this unfortunate mammal is gifted with extreme mobility, and this mobility is dangerous for everything that comes in its vicinity. This is making me think of that chariot card. For with a single and unconscious lash of his tail, he will submerge the impudent individual who would try to capture him. This mobile mastodon represents fate. The card presages danger of falls and wounds. It is the unexpected catastrophe, that lightning strike and the thunder roll the effects of which are far-reaching. It is detrimental um, to what it hits. It brings alternating losses and gains, which is often what happens with a tower moment. It clears away the old, and it can be really intense to absorb, but ultimately brings new life beyond it, right? Um, so it's important to understand that this in a negative aspect can be these folks still might have one last wound that they can cause you. But to me, it also came through as like this charioteer, right? You may be feeling in a very vulnerable position. And what these folks are not saying is that beneath the surface, you're winning and you're going to wipe them out by or fate. I'm sorry. Fate is going to wipe them out because this is the cruel hand of fate. It's powerful. It's a misfortunate fate. It's something that you need to know. I'll get a clarifier, but you are in the power position here in this base to of the Tetractus. This is cruel fate for these people that have tried to be working against you. This is you, Sagittarius, or fire sign with um, this Queen of Wands. Let's read it real quick just to give us some uplifting news. Kindly, intelligent, and urbane-looking centaur is treading with cautious hooves the mountainside in search of a few simples to gaze upon the stars from its summit. He carries an arrow which he will skillfully shoot at any evildoer, fighting for justice. Sagittarius is warm, dry, masculine, and of the fiery element. It is the card of peace, pacifism, quietude, of desire for upward progress, and gives every possibility of achieving it. Through skill and prudence, this two of swords. You don't need to make any moves right now. Let fate take care of this. It's out of your hands. It also represents intellectuality and fruitful thoughts. It governs the thighs and pelvis and causes... <laughs> I like this. These, this deck has health meanings as well. Causes gout, sciatica, and rheumatism. Funny. So this, this is a good layout. What are some closing messages for you about this? 
this couple may have felt like they were going to defeat you, but this is saying very clearly here they are going to be defeated. It may be hard to see that right now because of this Nine of Swords. So just know that Nine of Swords, that your mindset that you're in right now, might be being caused by them. That might be intentional. They might be trying to use that to throw you off your game. Or you may just be in a really tired position of like, when is this going to end, right? Like, I'm sick of fighting this off. I'm sick of defending myself. I'm exhausted. When is the cycle going to complete, right? So what else here? The Seeker. Card number 44. So the number four might have meaning for you. Four is my life path number, the Emperor card. Um, whoops, where am I going here? When we seek, we are often looking to improve an aspect of our lives, and what we learn along the way can be dropped as we make our way to the finish line. Examine closely your own small successes and enlightened moments. Now is a good time to start a new project, direction, relationship, or cause. The seeker is constantly picking up clues and pieces of knowledge to see how they fit into the world, and they view life as an adventure. They sometimes don't even have a goal, but are seekers of the thrill of whatever discovery is made along the way. So I know that's hard because of this Nine of Swords energy, but what I'm picking up from that message is try to see this as an adventure because you are protected. Fate is coming in to bring this couple or these folks who've been working against you a pretty severe blow that I think is going to end the cycle because that's what you've been praying for. That's what you've been working towards. You may have felt at times like, I just don't, I can't keep, I can't keep fighting this off. Like why I'm feeling that kind of fatigue. And this is saying, if you can hang on to the message of this dream, which is you are going to succeed and fate is on your side here. Um, try to see it as an adventure. Try to take some enjoyment and pleasure in knowing that these people couldn't bring you down. They might've underestimated you. That's been a big theme in readings lately. You might have been, people might have really read you wrong. They might have taken, taken your kindness for weakness. They might have taken your interest in the esoteric as naive or simpleton, right? That simples word came up here. They might have perceived you as that. Someone who's too not crafty like they are. Well, guess what? <laughs> who's going to be laughing soon, right? That's kind of the, the uplifted message of the seeker card. I'm going to pull... A Colette Baron read also because sometimes her messages are really helpful at a time like this. Try to get into the adventure and detach a little bit from this mental confusion because you're a king of swords. And the archetypes types of the high priestess and the chariot here are totally prevailing over this king and queen of pentacles. I can see why they felt powerful. King and queen of power pentacles are powerful in the earth element. So they may have felt unbeatable at times, right? Like they're just going to keep going. They're like the energizer bunny. They won't ever stop coming for me. And that's where your mind has gone this morning. That's not true. And in fact, get excited because some shit's about to go down. A tower moment is very immediate. It's not something that, oh, a few years from now, they're going to have their, it's now. Like something's unfolding now, maybe in real time, whenever you catch this, right? So take joy in that. Take joy in the sort of like vindication of God or the sword of Archangel Michael or something, right? What else? Why? Yeah, this is goes back to that dream. You may have been really trying to understand why, why, why would she do this to me? Why would this person do this to me? Why would my family betray me like that? You know, something like that. But this is a, in the reverse. So it's cautioning you about that process is what I hear here. Maybe to let that go because that might be keeping you in the Nine of Swords and making you vulnerable, right? When in the dream, I was able to find my own. It's like I had my own aha moment like, you did this because you felt like I was. it was a theft of you when really that's an illusion. I didn't steal anything from you. There's no lack here. The world of the magical world, plant medicine, the esoteric, whatever, is available to anyone who wants to study it. I just happened to commit to it. 
I made it a big commitment in my life. Like I'm so drawn to this that I'm ready to be in it and working in it, right? I committed to it. That doesn't mean that I stole something from someone, right? 31, why in the reverse? Sometimes subconsciously denying the truth may drive you toward a specific outcome that actually aligns with an intention hidden from your awareness. For example, you may want to be prominent in your profession, but your desire is not really about sharing your talents, but about making yourself feel better because fame would cause people to admire and approve of you. Or you may want to reunite with the partner who rejected you because you believe that your love continues to be strong, but deep down what you really desire is to have the last word with that person. Boom. Now is the time for deep soul searching of the why. What drives your choices? What you uncover will set you free and bring you even closer to the happiness you seek. Really, really awesome card. Um, I'm going to also pull one of these ink blots because I'd like to scry into it a little bit. And that'll be the closing. That'll be the closing of this layout. Thank you for being here and thank you for um, listening in on my first... Decks are all screwed up here. Thank you for catching my first um, dream-based layout. I'm excited. The more I embrace it and accept it and do the layout, the less fearful I feel. Because when I woke up, I was kind of in that Seven of Pentacles energy. Like, why am I being stalked in my dreams? Like, why is this night of torment? Like, what is going on, right? Well, it was it's channeling that energy in this really positive way for me by giving this reading and sharing the dreams. That's what I asked for. I asked to have dreams that would help people. Ooh, man. Oh, man. That is powerful right off the bat. To me, this is, well, just give me a sec here. Yeah, this is like this. I'll sh see if you can't see the ink blot here. It's to me looks very Capricorn or devil energy almost at first glance. What I'm seeing as I gaze into it is the path that you when you get on the green path or the um, the magical purpose or the um, the world of the esoteric when you get on this road. It can take you in two directions, right? It can take you towards more black magic, revenge magic, love magic, interfering with people's free will, carrying out acts of justice. And I'm not even necessarily against that. Like when a lot of witches were working on binding um, what's his face on the Supreme Court, right? That had um, raped that woman in college. Like a lot of women were doing binding spells on him because they felt like it was all they had. Like, okay, now he's on the Supreme Court where well, there is nowhere for us. There's nowhere safe, right? A lot of women felt like that. And so I'm not judging that as neither here nor good, but I've learned more and more on my own path that that is not for me to carry out. I don't judge people that do carry it out because someone who feels in a powerless position being victimized over and over, they can use something like that, like a binding spell to protect themselves. But to me, this is that tightrope and tightropes have been coming up a lot in my life just as a symbol. It's a tightrope to walk. If you get on this path, you have to be constantly checking your ethics. Why do I want revenge against this person? Is this person even really guilty of what they're being accused of, right? Like cop jacketing someone in activism circles can destroy someone's reputation and their friendships. So it's, and there's in, even within that community, a lot of talk and acknowledgement of that. Like we really have to be careful before we go slinging arrows, accusing people of being informants because it can really have devastating impacts. And that might've been something that you were worrying about or experiencing. So that's what this card is saying to me. I'm also seeing swans, a black and white swan. So the same kind of, the same kind of like, if you're going to ask for this site, if you're going to ask for and cultivate these powers within you, it requires a lot of discernment and a lot of understanding that, okay, if you're going to engage in those kinds of practices, be ready. You know, you can't, I, I don't, I've just already known on my own path, as tempting as it has been at times when I've gone through a heartbreak to do a love spell. I don't, I never have, I never will. I'll never use magic to get my way from people. I try to use magic to protect myself, to uplift nature, 
to be in a healing mode with people because I'm already, you know, in a healing profession as a talk therapist. So I don't play with it in that way to get my ego needs met. But a lot of people do. A lot of people use it for revenge. A lot of people look, just look at that movie or not movie, but, um, that Netflix show I'm blanking on, it's based on a comic book, I think, but I'm, I'm not a huge, deeply into the world of comics, so I can't remember, but the main character is Dream, and that warlock traps him in that um, place, in, you know, in that shield or that bubble, and he, he's trapped there for however long, like eons and eons, right, and he just refuses to speak, he won't speak to the warlock, he won't tell the warlock any of his secrets, he won't, and what torture that was for him, right? It's something like that, like that warlock wanted Dream's wisdom for his own power, not to help anyone, not to be a helpful... I follow this hypnotherapist on this one platform and somebody asked a question on there about how do I know if this is my twin flame or a warlock? And the hypnotherapist was like, the first question should be not even having anything to do with a twin flame. It should be what kind of warlock what kind of magic do you suspect this warlock of practicing? Is he in service to self or is he in service to others and the planet, right? These are things that if you want to go down this path, you're going to have to ask yourself, right? Um, like in my dream, the, the person who was my sibling, who I'm thinking maybe you feeling a family betrayal, they decided, you know, I'm not saying voodoo is a dark path, but the group that they were in, the company that they were in were dark people. So it wasn't... Um, great for her she, even though she looked beautiful she had all this new power she was living somewhere amazing like jamaica it felt illusory almost right and they really didn't have her back they weren't gonna risk their own spiritual safety to help her when i was coming at her to be like why why did you do this to me right so anyways um i think i'll just try to end it there and because the energy was so intense i've been trying to burn this here to just keep the energy clear in my own space from those energies, especially that dream where someone was bashing my walls in with a sledgehammer. That was a scary um, experience to wake up in and think, is somebody actually attacking my home right now? Like it was alarming for a few minutes, especially with that infrasound experience of like being unable to move, like being frozen because you're scared, right? Like that happened for a minute before I was able to be like, okay, I think you're just waking up from a dream. And it was very vivid. And it was during the witching hour all right, so thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Um, let me know in the comments if you would be interested in me posting a way for you to access getting a personal reading or to leave a tip. And I'll see you soon. Thank you again. Be safe.